back out here today to show you part two of the video series of the off-grid rainwater harvester. Today I'm going to kind of show you all the details. Last week I did kind of a part one where we built this actual structure to collect rainwater. So you want to check that out, click right there. And uh, you can see, go ahead and see part one and come back and see part two. But anyways, today I'm going to take you through all of the setup, how it works from like literally from where it collects the rain back through the house and out the gray water system, which is kind of uh, not exactly there yet, but I'll still show you guys and uh, take you through the whole system and uh, hopefully you can perhaps if you decide it's a good idea to build one for yourself so stay tuned so the day i decided to shoot this video coincidentally is raining so that'd be pretty cool you can actually see the whole setup in action shoot this whole setup without getting my fancy schmancy camera uh wet that's the last thing i want but anyways uh so the way it works is we built this uh 12 by 26 platform and uh, that's tough text all across the top for you, for you guys who actually didn't go back and see part one and uh, the idea is it's at a very slight angle the whole way down and it comes down into this gutter which as you can see is already starting to fill up a little bit and in the future we're going to put some gutter guards up here just to uh, help prevent a lot of the major debris coming in, even coming into the uh, gutter itself. So once the gutter collects enough rain to where it actually starts to slant and fill up and come down in here it comes down into this three inch PVC pipe which you can see is happening right now and all the way down here this pipe acts as kind of like a flush out, so all the major debris from when the rain first start uh, gets collected in here. So hopefully the idea is for all the big stuff to be in here. Wow. So then what happens once this flush out uh, tank fills up it'll come up here and you can see we have like a, uh, a good slant down here and it'll come down in here and fill this all the water goes into this 275 gallon P, uh, IBC tote and as the water comes in here I have all three of the valves there open for the three 275 gallon tanks and it'll from pressure just from the weight all three of these will rise instantly so if there's ever a problem with any of these, like if one of these were to have a hole punched in it or something like that, you can go through and turn the valve off for each particular one until you fix that, sort that out. That way all the water won't rush out of that one particular one. So if there were ever a leak in the house or anything like that, I put a ball valve here too, just as an extra, like I guess you could say kind of redundancy thing to make sure we don't spill like precious, precious water. So this is not a gravity fed system. This is all pump driven. Well, partially gravity in that. Uh, water does go back to the house with gravity, but then it goes to a pump and everything on the other side of the pump is pump driven. I'll show you how that whole system works now. Oh, and I forgot to mention, we're going to put some gutter guards up here, but we're also going to put a mesh screen here of some sort. There's uh, websites out there that actually specialize in nothing but rainwater collection. So that'll give us some options. We'll take a look at that and see which one works best for this application to put over the downspout. All right, so moving on, this, uh, all the water that's going into the house travels down a one inch pipe into the house. Sorry for the mess again. We're still kind of getting things together and it goes here at a 90 degree angle back through here and under here. What I have set up here is a 45 degree angle. You can do this just about any way you want. This is just the materials I had on hand and a small little fitting here that connects to a 5 8 inch plastic piece to this. I think this is nylon tubing. I think they call it. It could be something else. I forget. So don't hold me to it. Um, and this right here is what's going to go directly into the pump. This is all kind of homegrown and grassroots with the intention that I know this stuff won't last forever, these pumps, but hopefully it should last for a good number of years. But when it does, we can simply just unscrew a couple things. And uh, under here, by the way, is the pump and uh, a little another filter, which will be the third filter in this whole setup. And uh, so I'll pull this out and show it to you guys how it all works. So this is what it looks like above. I just pulled it out. This is the actual tube coming in and to the pump and this is the tube going out to the house. And so don't let all this stuff fool you, seeing all the pipes and the tubes and the hoses and all that, this is all real, real simple stuff. Anyone can do it. If you're here in person, you'd be able to even get a better idea of this one. So I'm trying my best to show you how this all works uh, on the video so you can kind of see if this might be a good setup for yourself. So I bought one of these little things at Wally World. I hate going to that place, but anyways, I went there and bought one of these little plastic containers and flipped it up upside down and then put a couple screws in it just to hold it down to protect it from the elements. So this is what it all looks like. Again, this is the water coming in and there's a filter there, which is the third filter in the whole setup so far. And the water goes out on that side. And these little pumps are great. This is DC power driven. I think you can convert it to AC. So if you're not off grid, you can just plug it right into your house or any receptacle. Uh, but I think it pumps things up to, 
let's see, it's three gallons per minute, and I believe it is 55 PSI, which is more than enough. It's almost like, feels pretty identical to a traditional house as far as water pressure. These lines are just a positive and a, uh, positive and a negative, and I have these hooked up to a battery, which is just a typical marine deep cell battery. That's what you want, this sort of kind of uh, discharge slowly. You don't want like a car battery where that's made for lots of amps or lots of starting power. This one right here is just made for a slow, even discharge. And from there, this battery is being charged by a 100 watt uh, panel from a company called Renergy. I like them because they're pretty established and they have good support and all that jazz. So anyways, that's a 100 watt solar panel. And underneath the trailer, I have a, see if you can see it, charge controller. So that just kind of, you can see where it's, um, sorry for the water on the lens. You can see where it's blinking. That means it's not fully charged. And uh, also this battery and this panel is also powering up the fan to the compost toilet. So anyways, that's the charge controller. And at that, it goes from the solar panel to the charge controller, which goes straight into the battery and keeps it pretty much topped off. So anyways, going back to the pump, this is the owl valve. So this is a water hose that goes out of the pump underneath the house and comes back out the front in through this filter, which is the fourth filter in the whole process. The company that makes these, I got you get these on Amazon. I'll link this and all the other stuff in the description. Uh, they say you need to rate this, uh, you need to change this every three months. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if that's really how long, we'll probably do it lo wait longer than that actually. But this gives us peace of mind like we're washing dishes and stuff like that, so. This water hose just goes into an iron pipe which just goes into the whole house and pressurizes the entire tiny house. So in the tiny house, the water system powers the sink. And it also provides water to the all-in-one washer-dryer combo. So this setup actually brings water in. I think it only uses like seven gallons per load. And then it steams all the, the heating, the heater, the, I'm sorry, the dryer for this uh, actually steams the water and the water goes right back out the same place that uh, when the washing cycle uh, ends, which goes out through the gray water as well. It powers the shower. And lastly, it powers the water faucet outside. This thing is pretty quiet from inside. You can't hear it. I have it running now because I have a valve open, so listen. All of the hot water in the tiny house is provided by this EcoTemp on-demand propane hot water heater. So once all the rainwater is used, uh, it comes out of this two-inch PVC pipe. It just travels down this way, all the way there, all the way there, way down there, away from that tiny house. In the future, In the future, we're gonna have a uh, some sort of gray water filtration system. I'm not sure exactly what it's gonna be. I've seen a few cool ones where it's like a big black box. I forget the name of them. There's several companies that do it and it travels through several filters. Then it goes back out into something else. And I've also seen where people do plants that are really, really good at filtering and all of the debris that go down, the debris that goes down the sink, like food particles or whatever, just turn into compost to help the, um, the plants and they do it in a kind of like a step system so by the time it goes down all the way down through the other end it's like perfectly clean water which you can use to um you know you can capture and water your plants with or whatever all right so that is the rainwater collection system it's a total of 825 gallons and um it kind of we took you from the, the actual build process in part one of the video which again you can see right here and took you uh, all the way through the process of how it's collected ran through the house and then dispelled back out the back um, so the whole total project cost was roughly $1,000. So that's including the roof, the IVC totes, the PVC pipe, even the, uh, well, you're doing the solar panel and the battery is about $1,200. Um, so if you do the math, this whole entire setup will pay for itself in about 17 months if you consider that. Uh, my father, whose tiny house this is, his water bill is about $70 per month. And uh, so if you do the math, it's roughly about 17 months. It'll pay for itself and it should last way beyond that amount of time. So again, none of this stuff is really rocket science at all. I mean, it's very, very simple stuff. I'm actually um, here in East North Carolina and I'm hoping to in the future once we get everything set up, invite people to come out here and check it out and see firsthand how everything works and see what they think we did right for that would help themselves and how they could do it better for themselves or to uh, fit their specific needs. Um, so I will update you on YouTube once we get to that point. 
So anyways, thanks, thank you so much for watching, and we got lots more videos of this whole entire setup. We're gonna be doing similar stuff like this to continue to be completely off-grid. So thanks for watching, see you on the next video.